Um, it is a great pleasure for me to be here at the SWITCH conference after more than a year uh, that I left Europe, the Ethnographic Museum World and the SWITCH project as an active member. And I would like to thank Wayne for inviting me to speak at this occasion and for the great opportunity to join my old colleagues in this inspiring discussions. <laughs> I mean old in the sense of long time. <laughs> um, in our conversations uh, with Wayne about my possible contribution to this conference, I mentioned my interest to reflect upon some experiences uh, with collaboration formats I had when I was still working in Vienna. And Wayne encouraged me to present some initial thoughts. And I have to caution, it is a bit maybe immature and it's not a theoretical paper. It's, uh, I would like to speak from the practice and I think it would be interesting to compare that with our discussions, theoretical discussions here um, at the conference. And I'm a bit nervous because I thought I have 30 minutes and I was told I have 10. So I hope I don't get completely confused with my message here. But I try to make it as um, quick as possible. I hope I don't talk too quick then. But uh, I hope I can get my message um, across. So, so um, my introduction this morning is more uh, a set of questions I would like to raise about collaborative practices um, of museums of ethnography or world cultures with so-called source communities and diaspora groups in their immediate surroundings. Such formats are thought to be geared uh, to enable encounters, not only with objects, but be between people, and to give voice to other perspectives on museum holdings and narratives. Equally, collaborative contemporary art projects also, um, uh, uh, which sometimes take place uh, at these museums, have adopted comparative approaches by getting deeply immersed in other cultural spheres of knowledge and living in co-creating collaborative artscapes with members of uh, these communities. And also these formats are thought to allow audiences to experience difference and appreciate other values also by encounters with the real people involved. Um, yeah, so I don't really know if this uh, really frames the following um, uh, papers that well, but I hope it will incite a, uh, a discussion um, and a needed reflection of the direction in which such practices should go in the future. Um, in 2014, a colleague of mine in Vienna, a professor of post-colonial studies, uh, Christian Caravagna, um, attacked the Weltmuseum Wien ferociously in reaction to some exhibition projects that he denounced as being colonialist. And in the same vein, he also accused the museum of performing folklore. With this, he referred to a series of events that the museum had organized in collaboration with local migrant communities or embassies. This cultural feast had been planned, organized, and financed independently by, um, uh, by those without interference of the museum that basically acted as an event location but did not influence the proposed program uh, by these groups. The critique did not refer to a specific event, but rather generally, generically questioned this kind of programs as colonialist, as producing difference. So it could have targeted the colorful cultural festivals organized by the Indonesian or Filipino community and embassy, a Nigerian Adira festival, the Dia de los Muertos, organized by members of the Vienna Mexican community, or a live performed ritual by a born priest at the museum. In a reaction I wrote at the time in response to this criticism, um, I defended this practice of collab collaboration by pointing out that ethnographic museums should give room for self-representation. I described these sorts of culture festivals as self-determined and self-confident initiatives of the communities who took the opportunity to make a mark in a cultural institution in the center of a metropolis which was in stark contrast to the usual spaces at the margins of the city where, these, where they usually would celebrate their important occasion. But I kept thinking about the whole issue because I have to admit that there was some kind of reservation and uneasiness I experienced when I participated at some of these events that in many respects questioned, questioned and inversed our own values and intellectual discourses about representation, othering, exoticizing and the production of difference in the history of our institutions. 
While I still support the idea of the ethnographic museum offering a space for such encounters and giving room to self-determined cultural representation, the question arising was if such formats of collaboration needed a sort of curation. But what kind of mentoring or monitoring could that be? And would it be again a kind of control, paternalism, and asymmetry of power relations within the museum sphere, which we are trying to avoid? Another question is whether and how the framework of world culture and ethnography museums with their colonial legacy, and particularly segments of their audience with a longing for the exotic, impact such endeavors of self-representation and self-assurance. I would like to make my point clear by presenting some of the moments that caused me to think about this conundrum of exotization or self-exotization within the museum space and compare them with a historic example of exhibiting people. The example map a different range of collaborations that all included interactions with the public. This overview is not to, meant to denounce these contemporary practices, but rather to incite a reflection about their value, significance, and the challenges they pose in our contemporary museum work. In 2013, uh, the Weltmuseum Wien organized an exhibition uh, and live performance together with art, the art history department of the Vienna University and an associated research project. It was titled Bone, Spirits in Butter, Art and Ritual of Old Tibet. One of the marketing slogans was, and I quote, experience religious rituals at first hand in the museum, end of quote. Lama Yangon Sherat Tenzin from the Samling Monastery in Nepal, a tantric spiritual head and lineage master of the Bone religion, came for the first time to Vienna and conducted a series of what was called traditional rituals and live performances at the Vienna Museum. The rituals could be experienced live in the museum or streamed online. A group of Bone priests from Nepalese and French monasteries, in addition, created an altar on which it was said the gods of their religion would dwell. The project co-curator uh, co and professor for Asian art at Vienna University, Deborah Klimburg Salter, underscored that it was not a show, but real rituals. The audience was invited to interact with the guests and ask questions to the priests, create prayer flags under their supervision, and actively participate in the rituals during which they received blessings and underwent purification. For over a month, an exhibition of rare examples of bone art framed a specifically created altar where the ceremonies took place and visitors could observe them. Under the label Interactive Rituals, several ceremonies took place on site that also actively involved the museum and its director, as some of them served to assemble the quintessence of luck for the museum to prepare it for its upcoming renovation and repositioning work. And I show some of the images. Uh, the museum curator, oh, sorry, I have to go back. Uh, in charge and the whole staff took great care to follow all instructions from the priests and to fulfill their needs. Although the priests directed the procedure, their actions were commented and announced to the public and the press by the curators who acted as the cultural brokers. Another event that took place at the Weltmuseum in 2013 was the Adira Festival organized by the National Association of the Nigerian Community in Austria called Chotlinanka, in collaboration with the Embassy of the Nigerian Republic in Vienna. The museum had established a close relationship with the Nigerian community in the wake of two major exhibitions devoted to the art and cultural history of their country. The Adira Festival was a proposal from the president of Nanka, Olieme Ogundele, um, who took great efforts to make it happen and give his community prominence in the museum. In the organizer's words, the festival aimed to promote and celebrate African culture, heritage, and community cohesion amongst people from different backgrounds. Over the course of a week, it included a carnival procession, <coughs> So the city ending with a party in the museum with prominent guests from Nigeria and cultural performances, fashion show, a Nollywood festival, and a dear workshop, as well as food stands offering Nigerian specialties. The folkloric performances, on the one hand, conveyed a stereotypic African image, drummers and acrobats in exotic wild animal outfits, um, and also included similar stereotypical rep rep 
presentation of other communities, the Chinese communities, the Brazilian, uh, but it also gave an insight into contemporary Nigerian popular culture and celebrity culture, pride about the own cultural traditions and the great wish to invite the Austrian community to join in their celebrations, to respect and get to know their culture, to be accepted as rightful members of the Austrian society. In this case, the museum offered the space for the occasion and had no active role, but announced it in their media channels and offered the Nigerian community a platform for their own spectacle of culture. The Nigerian community was very satisfied with the outcome of the festival and organized a second version of it uh, at a different location in Vienna, I think last year, because the Welt Museum was closed for renovation. On the whole, it was very well attended by their own community and its constituencies. It was a great success because it gave the Nigerian community a sense of belonging to a world of culture from which they were usually excluded and incited bright because Nanka could act as host in the splendid setting of the museum in the center of Vienna. A third project I would like to present here did not take place at the Weltmuseum Wien, but was an art project hosted by TB21, the thyssen Bornemisse Art Contemporary Center. This is a private foundation, an exhibition space in Vienna dedicated primarily to the commissioning and dissemination of ambitious uh, experimental and non-conventional art projects that defy the traditional categorizations, often informed by an interest on, in social aesthetics and environmental concerns. In the summer of 2015, it organized an exhibition by the renowned Brazilian artist Ernesto Nieto, in which he involved the Amazonian Huni Kuin. They contacted the Weltmuseum for a collaboration to jointly host visiting representatives of the Huni Kuin and welcome them at the museum to show them also the Amazonian collections. I include it here not only because it resonates with ethnographic museum collaborations with Amazonian peoples, but also because it unveils some of the pitfalls of such formats that equally affect contemporary art institutions, embracing a vanguard and reflexive stance. The TB21 announced the project of Ernesto Nedo and the Hunikuin Arukushiba Sacred Secret as follows, and I quote, Arukushiba, conceived as Ernesto Nieto's personal tribute to the Hunikuin, unfolds as a subtle parkour with transitions from a space of preparation and initiation to the sacred area of ritual to a room of study and knowledge, culminating in the community's multiple voices of myths and songs. Nieto mobilizes a deep understanding of indigenous wisdom and tradition and the relational and perspectival nature of the Hunikuin's world vision." End of quote. The exhibition also focused on a book of healing, a first ever compilation of description of 109 plant species used by the Hunikuin and their applications in various curative treatments. Uh, the program uh, included a residency of seven young leaders of the Hunikuin, which was considered a dynamic part of the exhibition. It included, amongst others, talks by the residents about their traditional hunting, fishing, and agricultural practices, a body painting workshop, food presentation, a symposium on natural healing practices in Austria and the Amazon, lectures on environmental and indigenous rights issues, art conversation with Nieto and the Hunikuin. In the opening evening at the TB21, an art crowd assembled in the striking ambience of NATO's artistic interpretation of a Hunikuin assembly house. They sat in a circle, listening to Ernesto Nieto's introductory remarks. In the presence of rep representatives of the Hunikuin, Nieto spoke of them as these people and underscored their close connection to nature. When he spoke of them, he referred to them as they, sort of homogenizing uh, them in this collective. Only later he introduced some of them by name. He spoke about the medicines deriving from plants and traditional wisdom, and I quote from his speech, the sacred knowledge is from this planet Earth that is suffering so much from the action of this period. He also said, they are here, they have the healing, and they have a lot to teach. He said, we are here to create a zone of contact. Um, uh, and the space here created should enable social encounters between people. In her speech, Francesca Habsburg, the director and president of the foundation, thanks for having been able to absorb all of their love and happiness when she visited in Brazil. 
and she said, the collaboration, I quote, helps us to deepen our respect for our environment, end of quote. Then Habsburg asked the group for a small ceremony or a song to celebrate the birthday of an acquaintance of her present. The collaboration had been discussed in Brazil before with the community, and the Hunikuin had agreed to participate because they felt that their culture was valid in Europe while it was discriminated in their own country country. In Vienna, though, even if there was respect and interest from the public, the, present became, the presence became a spectacle in which the longing for the exotic played a central role, and they ended up being framed unintentionally as the noble savages. The sincere intentions of the curators who really tried to make the experience for the Hunikuin in a very respectful way rewarding became entangled in a presentation of them as idealized people of nature. To um, conclude, and um, just here some images of this opening ceremony. Yeah. And um, by way of comparison, I would like to compare these practices with a historic example of exhibiting people. In a recent exhibition and publication, Hilke Tode Aurora has uh, presented the result of her archival research and concurrent fieldwork in Samoa to reconstruct the history of Samoan ethnic shows in Europe. Um, and, and already the title of her books make her point clear, From Samoa with Love, and the sum, subtitle reads Samoan Travelers in Germany, 1895 to 1911. And, it, in, and with this title, she clearly notes that the Samoan participants in these human shows were self-determined actors and not victims. Um, so she, uh, she traces uh, three of these uh, traveling shows um, and reconstructs who participated, where the performances took place, and gives, in gives insights into the happenings within the groups, personal stories, and the politics in Samoa and Germany surrounding them. She, um, she describes that the participants, most of which came from high-ranking families in Samoa, opted themselves to go on this trip, and how most of them were able to build on the symbolic capital of having visited Germany after their return to Samoa. After mishaps during the first tour, and I don't want to go into detail, it was decided at the time to involve uh, high-ranking Samoan members of society to coordinate and lead the groups. Um, and uh, in the third, um, uh, um, uh, in the third tour, Tupua uh, Tamasese Lealofi, uh, who was a, a, a high-ranking uh, uh, member um, and uh, who was also a contester for the Samoan throne at the time, was selected for this role, whose absence from Samoa was deemed helpful for the local political climate. And uh, Lealofi himself wanted to take this opportunity to go on a trip that he saw in the t Samoan tradition of a Malaga, a diplomatic visit, which counted as a very prestigious undertaking. He also aimed to meet nobility uh, in Germany, uh, the emperor and powerful man. In narrating his story, Tode Aurora uh, describes how Tamasese had completely different expectations and complained about being exhibited in front of peoples in zoos. But in the end, it was make, made possible for him to meet the German emperor, and he had encounters with prominent German businessmen. The remembrance of, this, of the trips and the associated prestige is still alive among the descendants of the participants. Um, I, I think it is important to point out that this is one particular uh, story of many, as well as the examples I brought before, because as we know, in the history of such human shows, people also often were forced to participate, and many died because of illnesses or mistreatment, and they were pressed to conform to stereotyped expectations. But also there are different other stories we, knows, uh, we know uh, from the literature, where people uh, joined these uh, projects deliberately and uh, could use them for their own purposes. So in coming back to the examples uh, I brought before, um, I think um, <clears throat> all the uh, Samoan performers, the Hunikuin, as well as the Bone priests, uh, proudly presented and enacted their culture in front of European spectators. And also the same holds true for the Nigerian Association in Austria. In all these examples, encounter played a central role. 
Tode Aurora mentions that in addition to the voyeuristic, patronizing attitude of the viewers of human shows in the late 19th or early 20th century, there obviously was an overwhelming need of the spectators to communicate and interact with the ethnic show performers. Such encounters are usually today considered to foster increased respect and understanding between people. Can we assume it was the case also in the past? What is clear from all examples is that the participating communities all followed the strategy and had an agenda. The born priests wanted to give their little known religion more uh, presence in Europe and raise funds to repair their monastery uh, by uh, the monastery building. The Nigerian Austrian Association wanted to convey a positive image of their community in Austria, where Nigerians were often associated with drug dealings or illegal illegal prostitution to further integration and conviviality and claim a presence in Austrian society. The Huni Kuin delegation used their residence in Austria to advocate for the respect of their traditions and sovereignty in Brazil and to denounce threats to their environment. The Samoan performance performers obviously gained social capital after their return due to their world experience, but also had a strategic advantage because of their first-hand insight in the culture and politics in Germany, the colonial power that had taken over their homeland. In this strategic essentialism, all groups had their own objectives, determining why they engaged in the, inter in the interactions, using the public moment for their own empowerment in different ways. While strategic essentialism, even if going along with self-exotization, might be an acceptable path to advance the own agenda, it certainly would be questionable if applied by the hosting institutions. And most ethnographic museums have distanced themselves from practicing practices of essentializing cultures because of the imminence of stereotyping cultures. Is it acceptable for all these uh, projects to happen um, in an ethnographic museum, or does this framework affect the strategies unintentionally? What should the role of museums do, uh, be uh, to frame these uh, projects? And um, are some of, to our view, possibly exotistic performances only projections of what the actors feel is expected from, this, uh, in, uh, in, from them in this environment, or is it a self-determined representation of their own culture? And how can the museum manage or moderate the voyeuristic longing of their audiences for the exotic? So my fine, I have more questions, but I, I just want to finish with, um, with this final question. Is The question is, so did the critique that uh, the museum in Vienna received uh, uh, against such collaboration practices and associated cultural events have a point in denouncing them as colonialists? Thank you very much. <laughs>